I sir. Number two, how our rights are in danger because they are very much in danger. <coughs> and point number three, historically proven failure. Okay, so we're going to start with the right our laws grant us. The Second Amendment states, and I quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What does this mean? Well, the Second Amendment greets us the freedom of militia and the freedom to keep and use firearms. The freedom of militia, which is the first half of it, gives us, gives us the right to form up a militia. And in essence, the government thinks they have the right to regulate us. But we, as the people, being a democratic republic, have the right to govern the government and make sure the government doesn't get too powerful, um, which we'll see later on. And then it gives us the, fr um, the freedom to keep and use firearms. That's right. Because our founding fathers used firearms as a tool to grant us our freedom. So I believe we have the right to keep those firearms and use it. We can use it for fun. We can use it for protection to defend our families. Right. We can use it to defend our nation and our borders. Okay. So that's, that's in essence the rights our laws grant us. Now we're going to look at how our rights are in danger. Well... It seems like to me, and I'm sure everyone else, every single time that there's a shooting in the United States of some kind, whether it be the shooting in the movie theater a couple years ago at the Dark Knight, whether it be um, the Sandy Hook shooting, guns take the blame. Now, you can't honestly blame the firearm. You have to blame the person pulling the trigger. Because I was watching a video one time of an ex-Navy SEAL, and he said, evil will find a way to commit heinous acts. That is just the way evil works. But then we, both, we also have some historical proof of our lives are in danger. In 1994, President Bill Clinton put the assault weapons ban into play, and this ban forbade the purchasing and owning of some semi-automatic firearms that had the same cosmetic features as the ones that are automatic. Which, in essence, that's, that's a real big mouthful there for you. But to simplify it, um, <clears throat> if a military issue automatic weapon has a pistol grip and a four inch with tactical rails, just because the semi automatic may have a pistol grip and um, tactical rails, the pistol grip and the tactical rails would be banned because it, it uh, has the same features as the automatic, despite the fact. It isn't automatic. So it really cuts us down on what we can buy. They actually had a list of um, companies. They wouldn't even ship any foreign companies like FN or HK or Steyr, anything like that. They wouldn't ship it in the country. You had to find all kinds of loopholes. Gun companies found loopholes to get around it. You still 
don't buy it, but then they also hit you with magazine capacity. You can only have around 10 to 20 round magazines. So that was one problem by itself that expired in 2004, thank goodness. So right now there's a big push to buy ARs and everything while they're still available, which I completely agree with. Um, in current times, 